Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to make this simple physics-based catapult. So let's see how this works. So we have this arm, and if we pull down, it stays there, and then we can put a weight onto it, and it will, show, it will throw that weight and cause destruction. So I'm going to first show you how to make this simple uh, arm, then we're going to see how we can trigger the the catapult to shoot with using the E key and also how we can use this uh, pull arm to pull this down like that. So I'm uh, going to include uh, links to these models here in the video description so we can follow this more easily. So let's go ahead and create an actor. And we're going to use two meshes. One for the base. And the other one for the arm. Um, so we have here arm. Now let's drag this lower so the axis of the arm is exactly in the center of this <coughs> we'll also add a physics constraint that acts as a spring that will make this arm come back here now because the arm is moving we're gonna have to simulate physics now in the physics constraint we have to link the base and the arm here and we also have to disable the collision between the two objects okay now we set up the physics constraint and the object let's <coughs> configure this the physics constraint so the linear limits will li leave locked and the angular limits will lock everything and then will unlock the rotation around the y-axis in the vertical plane like this so actually we'll put this to limit now because the physics constraint allows us only to limit the movement around the cent central axis with the, the same angle which it's uh, 45 in this case we're gonna have to rotate this so we'll take the physics constraint and we'll rotate it so we want the arm to have a rotation from the vertical uh, position to the horizontal so we're gonna have to put the axis in the middle here uh, of the physics constraint so we're gonna rotate the physics constraint like this so actually 135 degrees so it's because it's 90 degrees from here and another 45 degrees so now I can move from here to here so let's do the same with the arm We'll put this in the middle here, we'll rotate it with 45 degrees. So now the arm is in the right position and it's free to move. And here, let's go ahead and disable the soft constraint. Okay. And we'll also have to set the target orientation when where the arm wants to come back, which is here vertically. So Activate twist and swing and check the swing and this position right here it's going to be from 0 to 45 degrees like that so let's put this force up to 500 or more like 700 okay so if you compile this and we drag we drag this into the scene we can try it already So you can see we can pull it down like that and we put the weight and it throws the weight. Now as you can see uh, the arm is in at 45 degrees so we when the game starts we want it to, to be here actually. So we'll set this in the 
event begin play will take the arm and will set it to a rotation of because now it's at 45 degrees it will be actually at zero like this so we set the rotation and because we can set its world rotation uh, only world rotation then we have to use the actor transform like this to transform because it's actor to world transform will transform the rotation from its local rotation which is going to be this one to the world rotation like this so we want it to be at zero so let's try this out so as you can see this one teleported already and this one came uh, to the vertical position from at 45 okay so this is basically it you can um, uh, use this uh, as simple as it is but let's go ahead and um, try to trigger it using the, the E key and actually pull it down. So for that I've made um, an event in the player so when that player looks at the object it actually um, calls a function an event actually in that object and that is uh, done using an interface so if we go into our catapult and into the class settings we have implemented interfaces here and we're gonna use the use interface like this so if you compile we have to compile for this uh, to be active and if we go here and search for event use we're gonna have this event that is gonna fire when we look at the object and push the E key. Now here we're gonna have two states. One is when the catapult is ready to fire and one when it's not. So we're gonna uh, make a variable for this. So we'll see ready to fire and compile this and we'll branch from here So when this is ready to fire, it's going to fire here and at false, we're going to have to uh, pull the arm down so it's ready to fire. So here, well, what we'll do is actually take this component and we'll force it to the rotation of 90 degrees because here it's a rotation here, um, vertical it's zero and horizontal is 90 degrees so we're gonna use move component to sorry move component to this one so this will move the component over time to the desired position so we're gonna take the arm and because the location we want it to be the same we just get location relative get the relative location we'll just plug in the rotation the location that it has right now and the rotation we want it to be at 90 degrees so we'll use in and out and we'll do this over two seconds now when this is completed uh, we because we force it to go here then when that is completed we kind of let it go so it will try to come back to this position but we want to charge this with a weight so we have to wait here so that means we're gonna have to go into the physics constraint and set its target orientation to be here horizontally and that is if we look here because vertical is 45 this is 0 and this is gonna be minus 45 so if you go back here in the move after the move component we're gonna have to set so we take the physics constraint 
and we set target orientation like this so you split this and in the y-axis we'll put minus 45 right here so after that we wanted to say that it's ready to fire so then we put this to true like that now after this happens then if we push E again it will take this route right here so what we want to do right here is uh, let this go so to make it come back really fast then we will reset its target orientation to vertical so we just copy this put it right here plug it in like that and so we put this again to 45 and then well set it's ready to fire to false because we already fired it so if we try this out so I'm gonna push the E key so it doesn't move and why is that well we take the arm we haven't actually plugged in the arm here see because it has to have a target component okay so let's try again now so you push the e key goes down and then it has a jerk and that's probably because uh, it has a time between this the finished movement and the set angular orientation so it tries to go back and then it's set again here so what we'll do is actually we'll put this before so we'll cut this from here and we'll put this before like this okay so now what it will do is actually when we force it to move to the horizontal position it already wants to go there okay so now it should have no jerk so we play this again we try again like this then it goes and it stays there so now we charge it like this then if we uh, we uh, push E again it should push this this weight but it doesn't and that is because as we've seen um, before this arm actually goes to split sleep so because it's not moving for a certain period of time it, uh, the engine puts it to sleep that means its uh, physical position will not be calculated that is to save processing time so after we do this here we're gonna have to take the arm and wake it from sleep with wake rigid body like this so now what we should see happening it's the catapult actually shooting so we pull the arm down we charge the catapult like this and then we push the E key again and as you can see it shoots so again like this and it shoots like that and it shoots okay now this is it for the uh, firing now we want to add this arm so what it does right now it's actually it pulls the arm forced by setting its rotation but what we can do is use a physical object like this one to actually push it down so uh, the uh, arm will try to stay in this location but we'll actually pull it down with this arm with the pull arm so let's try and see that how we can do that so we add another uh, 
mesh here. We'll call pull arm and we'll select here pull arm. And we're going to have to place it here, right here. So this is kind of tricky because it has to stay on top. So if we rotate it 90 degrees, this is not good because it's going to push the arm into the frame. So we're going to have to pull it up like this, I think. Let's see that again. 90 degrees. So this should work. Okay. So here, instead of moving this component, we're going to actually move the pull arm. So take the pull arm from here and then plug it into the component. The location is going to be the same. So we get relative location and we'll put this in here. And the rotation, it's probably going to be the same as this one. So if we rotate it here, it's going to be 90 degrees. Okay. So it's actually from this side, like that. Okay. So leave this to 90. So what happens now? Well, this will move the arm down. And then it stays there because we don't give it any other information. And we don't need this because the arm will go before the arm will go before the push arm will go there. So <coughs> we're gonna delete this. Okay, and now what we have to do here is actually teleport the arm or move it back again. We can copy this like that. Okay. So we move it back to zero over, let's say, we'll move it really fast. We can actually teleport it, but it's nicer to move it like this. So we just say 0 0.1, something like that, really fast. And now we will probably, well, rigid body will probably not gonna need this because, okay, so let's just plug this in. Let's just try it out and we'll see what happens. Okay, so if we hit the E key, so it pulls it down, stays there very well. If we push this again, uh, pause. so this moves really fast and this, so let's try this again. So let's see if, yeah, so the pull arm actually manages to be faster than this, so it's good. If not, we would have to get this time down or just set its relative location uh, rotation directly so we will, it will just teleport there but it looks better like this okay so the thing is I'm just going to explain really fast what happens here when this pulls the arm down the arm is actually trying to stay here but because the force of this is actually infinite because when we set this location the force applied it's infinite it actually it's pulled down so again, so this is pulled down, but the arm, it's trying to stay here all the time. So when we let this go, it lets go the arm. So, okay, this is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to show you. So the problem with this approach uh, is that the arm that you used to pull this, the pull arm, actually so the arm can go so fast that it actually passes through the the pull arm so this is not good because it what it will do is actually will stay like this so if we try to do this again you'll see see what happens so it lets it lets it go it's actually going into error well it's reset here but it's not normal so what we should do here it's because, so let's go back to our, uh, let's go back to our physics constraint. So we know that our physics constraint limits the arm mo arm's movement to vertical. But the problem is that 
what we done here if we put this to zero like it's already shot uh, sorry not this one uh, control Z So the arm, if we take the arm and put it at zero, so it's already shut, the weight. Now the problem is, you see it's in, in this, uh, what we need to do actually is move this a little bit. So it, it stays at this limit right here. So because the uh, physics constraint, when it limits the movement of the arm, it's actually limited really so it can it's impossible to go further it's, uh, unless you put it uh, in the physics constraint you put soft constraint that's another story but if you don't put this it will actually limit there it stop it will stop there it will not get further so what we need to do here is take the base and the arm in the pull arm sorry like this and move them a little bit like that so as you can see now the arm it actually stops just barely here and that's good because it will react to this arm and it will probably bounce a little bit which is uh, normal it looks normal realistic so now if we try this again uh, we, of course now we have well, actually it's not good what we did we should the base should be where it was before like this so let's see yes because the base should be with the axis here so it's good like that we only need to move this pull arm so let's try again <coughs> so I push the E key ah yes so we, as you can see here so this actually added some ah no this is because what we probably did is take the pull arm yes so as you can see now this is good it's good this happened so what what you can see here is that if we play this again but well, we can see that uh, the arm it's it's wants to stay in this location and that's weird because it should stay in the vertical position here but this happens because what it's m the most important thing is that the arm arms position uh, relative to the base and it's actually the it will actually be as this axis here it's, it will be considered as the center axis around which it rotates so it will rotate 45 left and right and because we left it here then it, it was free to move left and right around this position so and it wanted to stay at vertical which is this way actually now so what we have to do is we have to put this back to 45 and this now <clears throat> this will try to stay here okay so let's try it again like that use the e key so we pull this down no problem so as you can see right now it doesn't go further than that <clears throat> again and again so yeah as you can see because we have and small intersection here actually bounces so it looks more natural if you don't want that just move this out of the way so the limit of the physics constraint is actually before this arm so we will just stop that so yeah let's try this again try this put this here and then we'll shoot it so as you can see it works really well so there's one thing to note that if the force of this arm coming back here is really really strong it will actually go through the pull arm so the only the only uh, uh, solution for that is either go into the pull arm here 
and it has it has a setting in the collision physics right here is actually UCCD which is going to eat up more resources more uh, processor processing time but it will do continuous collision which means that um, it will update this collision the collision between the arm the polar and the arm is going to be continuous which uh, should not let the arm pu uh, pass through and the other solution would be to make this pull arm uh, thicker but of course that's gonna affect the visual representation so just if you have that problem use the ccd right here so that's it if you like this uh, please comment if you have questions leave them below and uh, don't forget to subscribe